One of the great advantages of gaming on the PC is that you have the ability to customize your system based on your preferences. You can choose whichever parts based on the level of performance you need, how much storage you need, what kind of aesthetics you're looking for, and more. And while it's great that you have this kind of freedom that no other platform offers, like a double-edged sword, you can end up with unnecessary spending where those funds instead could have been allocated elsewhere to further enhance your experience. Let's discuss that in this video. This video is brought to you by Ugreen and their Nexode 100 watt USB-C charge along with their 25,000 mAh power bank. If you're like me, you have several devices at your workstation, such as a smartphone, laptop, and perhaps a gaming tablet for some leisure. These chargers ensure minimal downtime so you can keep working and playing. The Ugree Nexode 100 watt USB-C Gallium Nitride Charger can charge a MacBook Air M2 to 55% in less than 30 minutes. This compact charger features four ports, three USB-C and one USB-A port, allowing you to charge multiple devices at once with up to 100 watt fast charge. Charging. Gallium Nitride 2 Tech makes it compact and efficient, with a built-in temperature sensor and intelligent power dispenser for safety of your devices from overheating and overcharging. Next, their 25,000 mAh power bank can completely recharge laptops up to 1.3 times and mobile devices up to 5.2 times. Plus, it supports fast power delivery standards like PD 3.1, up to 145 watts, which can charge a MacBook Pro from 0 to 56% in 30 minutes, which is much faster than your regular power bank. This powerhouse charges your laptop, smartphone, and other devices simultaneously with its two USB-C ports and one USB-A port. It also has a smart LED display to show you how much power is remaining in the bank. It's also very sleek and portable, perfect for heavy users on the go. Check out Ugreen and their fantastic charging devices using the links in the description and take part in their fantastic Prime Day deals with up to 41% off. Hey what is going on guys, Danny here, welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. For this video, I wanted to discuss a topic that I think may rub some people off in the wrong way. Let me preface this subject by saying how you spend your money is totally your choice at the end of the day. I'm not here to discourage you from your choices or preferences that you have. If you like a certain product or brand and it appeals for your specific use case and your setup, then by all means go for it if that's what makes you happy. The reason why I was prompted on making this video is because a few days ago I was helping out a friend with a PC build. They weren't after anything crazy in particular, just some light gaming and to use as a Plex server. We were using PC Part Picker to pick out some parts, compare specs, and pricing. So it's a useful site I've always been recommending folks to utilize, and what I really like is how they have features like compatibility specs, there's a lot of filters, and it also shows pricing from various retailers. While helping them out, I ended up strolling over to the build section of the website, and this area is pretty cool to check out time to time. It's kind of similar to the subreddit slash our battle stations but more pc build focused where folks are sharing their custom pc builds the parts they're using and the prices they got their parts for what i always find intriguing about checking out builds posted on here is that it really shows you how much people's choices differ by looking at these various pc builds you can tell which area of their build they are prioritizing and how they're allocating their budget what i mean by that is you can have two pc builds with a budget of around two thousand dollars but end up with vastly different parts which can therefore have totally different performance capabilities and result in a different experience between the two users. Now me personally, I'm a performance first kind of guy. When I'm constructing a build and brainstorming ideas for a gaming PC, I am building around the GPU, CPU, and to an extent the system memory, as those are the parts which will ultimately determine the level of performance the rig will be capable of. Everything else comes after and if that means allocating less of the budget towards the case or fans, which in turn leads to less visual appeal, I am totally okay with that. In other words, I'm prioritizing performance over aesthetics. I want to show you guys a build I saw which was submitted from a user by the name of CoolBoyB on PC Part Picker's website, and this is a pretty good example of what I'm talking about. And again, I'm not doing this to throw this person under the bus or make them feel bad about their purchase or anything. Like I said at the start, at the end of the day, if you're happy with how it turned out, then I guess that's all that really matters. But looking at this build here, upon a first glance, it doesn't actually look too bad. He's got a 7800X 3D in there, which is arguably the best gaming processor on the market. He's got an optimal memory configuration there, which is hitting that sweet spot for Zen 4's IMC. We've got an RTX 4070 Ti Super, which is great for 1440p gaming, can handle high refresh in a lot of esports titles, which, judging by his monitor choice, is probably what this user 
user is after, and can even handle 4K gaming as well with the help of some upscaling. So overall, at a first glance, it looks like an absolute powerhouse of a PC, but there are ways to take this build much further and extract a lot more performance from this budget. Here's what I would do personally. First off, the 7800X 3D during a gaming workload doesn't consume a whole lot of power there, therefore it's not going to be running super hot. According to Tech Power Up's review of the 7800X 3D, during a gaming workload it was consuming around 50 to 60 watts of power, and that translates to some pretty low temps so you don't need a whole lot to cool it. There would be a bit of heat added from the 3D cache die on top, but it's nothing too crazy. So I would personally drop the AIO cooler and go for a tower cooler from Thermalright, and their Phantom Spirit Evo has gotten some really solid reviews. I've seen reviewers testing this tower cooler with a 13900K and getting some decent results like below 70C during a gaming workload. So that right there saves us $168 for, with the switch from the Corsair AIO. And you'll see how a lot of the money in this budget ended up going towards just the name Corsair. And we're going to be talking more about that in just a moment. Next, the motherboard here isn't a bad choice, but if this build is primarily going to be used for gaming, and we're not doing anything crazy here with it when it comes to overclocking, then we can drop this down to a B650 motherboard, which is still basically giving you all the same functionality of the build. It'll support memory overclocking, it'll have no problem running the 7800X 3D, has plenty of expansion, the I.O. is just as extensive, it has a 2.5 gigabit port, plus I personally think it looks nicer too, but hey, that's subjective. Nonetheless, with this switch, we have another $69 saved. Nice. So that's $237 saved so far. Moving on to the RAM, and we're seeing a recurring theme here. Now the RAM configuration, or the Expo overclocking profile, is what I'd recommend getting for Zen 4's sweet spot. 6,000 mega transfers, CL30 is optimal. However, this person ended up overpaying way too much for the sake of getting Corsair's Dominator memory. A lot of people who are new to this hobby don't actually realize that all memory comes from like the same three manufacturers. So that's Samsung, Hynix, and Micron. And then what these brands like Corsair, G-Skill, Team Group, and more do is that they're basically just slapping their heat sinks on and shipping them. So this person could have gotten the same kit of RAM from another brand for way cheaper and still get the exact same performance. Here's what I found. This is from Team Group, part of their T-Create series from Amazon. 32 gigabytes, 6,000 mega transfers, CL30, same sub timings. So this is the exact same memory stick, except it's using Team Group's heat sinks, which are actually pretty solid. I use the same kit in my personal rig at 8,000 megahertz with no issues and they look really nice. They're also low profile, so they'll work great with our tower cooler. Best part, you saved another $82 for zero performance loss. It is absolutely astounding to me how much people overpay on components due to a Corsair tax or a ROG tax or some kind of premium gaming brand tax. Alright, so far we've saved $319, but we're not done yet. Now when it comes to storage, we can also make some tweaks here. I personally don't see the huge benefit of going with Samsung's Pro Series drives unless you're a content creator focused on, you know, moving a lot of big projects, but even that's a bit of a stretch. This user has a 500 gigabyte drive and we can see according to PC Part Picker's price history stat, it retails for about $80. And then they have a 4 terabyte 990 Pro, which I think will be used as a mass storage drive for gaming, but I think we can find more cost effective alternatives. So for the main OS boot drive, I'd go for the crucial T500 one terabyte. It is $10 more, but we've doubled our main drive capacity and still get a quality drive with a DRAM cache to handle those bursty workloads and random IO operations from the OS. Then for the mass storage drive, we don't need a drive with crazy fast read and write speeds, and even sacrificing the DRAM cache wouldn't hurt the experience. So I'd go for a crucial P3 Plus 4TB. So you still get that large capacity, read and write speeds are more than adequate for a gaming drive. So with these new storage drives, we're looking at another good chunk of savings, $72, and now so far we've saved $391. Alright, so we're going to be skipping over the GPU and case for now, and we'll come back to those. The PSU is good as well, I really won't make any changes there. You do want a good quality power supply that won't blow up your components. Next, we've got some fans from Corsair, and it looks like these are two three-packs of their QX120 RGB fans. So for six RGB fans, we're paying $248.
I'll repeat that, for just 6 RGB fans, we're paying $248. You guys remember what I said about the Corsair tax? This is just absolutely ridiculous. Guys, I get it, we want to make our builds look great and aesthetically pleasing to look at, and you also want to ensure you've got quality fans that move a good amount of air. But seriously, you do not need to spend this much on your fans. Now, if you were to ask me, I'm a cheapskate, and like I said, I prioritize performance over form, so I'd personally just grab a 5-pack of Arctic's P12 fans for like $40 and be done with it. I've used these fans in multiple builds. They move a good amount of air and are quiet and then I just grab like a cheapo $10 RGB LED strip and then throw that in the build and then call it a day. But that's just me. Now let's make it a bit more fair and find an alternative that is more apples to apples because we do want to add a bit of visual appeal to the build. So alternatively you can go for this 5 pack of RGB fans from Antec. You get the same visual appeal. You can still daisy chain the RGB cables to reduce clutter. We're missing one fan, but honestly, it's not needed. Five fans will provide plenty of airflow. But you see how we reduced our cost further from $240 down to just $42. So that's another $198 worth of savings. And now we're looking at a total of $589. Moving on from the fans, there's an interesting setup here with the monitors. Now I'm assuming they're going with a dual monitor setup, which is fine. The more monitors you can have, the better your experience will be, especially for multitasking if you like having other apps open in the background while you're gaming, such as like Discord, Spotify, etc. However, there's no need to get the same identical monitor for the secondary display. Keeping things consistent with respect to monitor size and resolution is okay, and that's what I also personally prefer and recommend. But instead of getting another high-end monitor for the secondary display, they can instead go for the MSI Pro MP275Q 27 inch 1440p monitor. So it'll look consistent with their setup, it's still 1440p so windows and text and scaling and all of that is consistent, and it'll function great as a secondary monitor. And then on top of that we're saving another $195 because we don't need to spend $320 for a gaming monitor which will just be used as a secondary display. Adding that to our saved budget, and we're looking at a whopping $784 dollars saved. With nearly $800 shaved from the original cost, there is a lot that you can do with this. The first thing is, well, you can simply just pocket the cash and call it a day and just save it for something else. But I opened this topic up because I said, the excess cash we saved can then be allocated elsewhere to further enhance your experience. The first thing that came to my mind was what would make the biggest impact to our gaming performance, and that's a better GPU. Now with the $784 that was saved, if we allocated that back into our GPU budget, we're now looking at a bit over $1600. You know which GPU you can buy with that kind of money? An RTX 4090, the best gaming graphics card on the market, granted if you can find one near MSRP, but with the amount of money we saved we were essentially able to jump two GPU tiers up or it's about 40 to 50 percent faster than a 4070 Ti Super and that will pair even better with the high refresh monitor. This user did mention something about future proofing with their build and getting an RTX 4090 it really doesn't get any better than that. Now if you don't necessarily need a 4090, you could allocate about $200 from that budget and you could upgrade to a 4080 Super, which is about 15-20% to better than the original GPU they have, and then you still have some money left over so you could upgrade the CPU to a 7950X3D, where you'd get the best of both worlds experience when it comes to gaming and content creation. But if they don't need that content creation bit, then they can stick with the 7800X3D and save that money. Then something else you can do is also get a better monitor. And you might be thinking, well they've already got a 1440p 240Hz monitor, what else could they get? Well, they could get an OLED 240Hz monitor, and I've gotta tell you, sometimes switching back and forth between my OLED TV and my IPS monitor, it'll take some adjustment because I'm just so used to the deep inky blacks of the OLED, the quick response times, and on top of that you'll get a true HDR experience, which in my opinion really goes a long way, so even if you aren't necessarily increasing resolution or refresh rate, you're still making a huge impact to your overall visual fidelity. Another thing you can do with all that money left over is you can invest in a better desk. Perhaps you can get a standing desk where instead of sitting all day, you can switch to a standing position to improve your posture and health. Speaking of posture, you can then use some of that money and get yourself a better ergonomic chair. I can't tell you how many times I've seen someone post their epic gaming PC setup with triple monitors, a high-end machine, and then they're using a $20 folding chair from Walmart. A chair is something that you might not think about because you're just sitting on it, but if you're going to be planted on it for 
extended periods of time, you might as well get something that's ergonomic and good for your back so that your old future self isn't going to be cursing you. Now, I could go on about all the various ways you could utilize that money we saved, but the main takeaway is that when you're making a build, think really carefully about what it is you're spending your money towards and if that price actually makes sense. Always compare parts from other brands and look at as many alternatives. In the build we just went through, unfortunately this individual ended up overspending way too much because of the Corsair RGB tax. They ended up going for an overkill cooling solution, they didn't need to get two of the same monitors when one is just a secondary display, and the other thing they could have done was they could have allocated that budget and got a much faster GPU or a much better primary monitor. Again, I'm not here to tell you that you can't have RGB in your system or if you want a liquid cooler because it's quieter and looks more aesthetically pleasing, then go for it. But you can still achieve all of that and still be reasonable with your budget, where you don't end up hurting the level of performance your system would be capable of or how much performance you could actually extract from that specific budget. You should never ever be buying or shopping based on a specific brand, because then you just wasted on the name Corsair or ROG, and you could have actually ended up using that money elsewhere that would have made an actual tangible difference. But that's all the time we have for this one. I hope you guys ended up learning something on how you can build a system while being smart with allocating your budget. We'll touch base in the next video. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.